there isn't. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here, Smart Business Moves. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. And we have a very special guest who's a super special guest to Liz. Liz's daughter, Shara Turley. Hi, Shara. How are you today? Doing great. How are y'all? You know, we uh, have a lot of guests. That's where I get it. Tom, that's where I get the y'all. See, you just heard her. The y'all. But like, she spends her time in the South. She's been indoctrinated. So. But maybe that's where I get it. I get it from okay. her. You think? Yeah. You were just asking me yesterday where I got it. It's just um, unusual. Most people from Washington, I don't think that's part of their working vocabulary, is it? Eh? That's more ours. Eh? Eh? It's a Canadian eh? thing. Yeah. Oh, um, Lava, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen where you have the private chat, there's another tab that says live comments. You'll be able to see what people post. Hey, Paula. Paula. Hey. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Tom, let's do our housekeeping so we can get into shara has got a, a lot to talk about today. Okay. Uh, so, just real quick, we've uh, are the downhill side of this week. Uh, we got Shar, and we're going to, this is really a rare opportunity because uh, we have a lot of people on, on, on uh, smart business moves who, you know, share their best ideas, but a lot of their experience has just been gained by just trying to figure stuff out, running their their uh, small cleaning business. Shar is a professionally trained and professionally functioning salesperson, which is different than a lot of us. Uh, you know, she, hope you don't mind that uh, Liz shared with us that, you know, you generate revenue of over $40 million a year and that's for zero million. And I don't even know how to write a number that big. So um, I'm sure that doesn't happen by accident. So being able to share with us some of those tips and trick techniques could certainly be, uh, be useful to us. So we're going to do that today. And what are we going to do uh, tomorrow, Liz? Uh, tomorrow we have a secret guest and the clue for our secret guest tomorrow is that she has something in common with the largest planet in the solar system. That's it. That's our clue. And I uh, hope to see you tomorrow on the spot. For those of you that don't know, we um, bring on our guest and each one of us gets one minute to answer any question that you ask us on the spot. It's kind of easy, kind of fun, and kind of fast. We so, use a minute rapid fire, bang, bang, bang. Um, hour goes by fast. Bring your best questions. Yeah. And it's Friday, so we like to wrap it up real quick on Friday. So get us out of here. All right. Definitely. Anything else we have to share this before we get going? Mm, no, no, not really. I think we're good. Let's just jump into it. All righty. Well, Leva, I think you are going to do um, your top 10. You're going to start from 10 down to the number one most important thing. Is that right? Yep. And I was going to, hi, Samantha. I was going to do a quick intro to give you an idea of my history, how I got from college to here, because I've done a lot of different kinds of sales that might. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Give you a different idea. Um, go ahead. Yes. Okay. So. I came out of college and went into a sales job back really before there was so much internet. Um, terrible job. They asked me to go into places and sell things I didn't know about. Um, gave me almost no information. Two months in, I called my mom and said I was crying more nights than not. I hate sales. I should never do this. It's terrible. And she said, get out. Just get out. You don't like it. The day before I called her, somebody told me, Hey, this job that you're trying to do seems terrible. Like, I don't even know you, but this is bad. You should get into insurance. I don't even like my insurance guy, and he keeps taking my money, so you should get into that. And I was like, <laughs> how do I get into insurance? Interestingly enough, I lived in Macon, Georgia at the time. Um, it's one of the six hubs for Geico, so I want to go work for Geico. I still thought I hate sales, so there's no way I'm going to sales. I go in there to interview, and all they have is <gasps> So now we're back in sales. And my job there was to take income call. And within three minutes, ask people about 25 really personal questions and then ask them to give me their credit card number over the phone. And I was expected to do about 10 of those a day where I actually got the entire sale. So very quick 
turn over there. Um, lots of no's, lots of yeses, just fast. From there, I went to work at Penske. Um, thought, again, I did not in sales, was there for about four months, picked up a mentor, my sales job opened, he told me to go for it. I got it. Um, it was a different kind of selling, and I enjoyed it very much. And I headhunted for my current job, which I have to go in a little bit. We just found out today that we were voted by Selling Power, number one selling company in the country. So, what, what, what Penske or, or Electric Guard Dog? Amarok. Well, Electric Guard Dog. Wow. So Amarok now. Yeah. All right. Congratulations, Mama. Thank you. Yeah, we're super excited. It comes down to how happy their employees are, and we're all just thrilled to be doing our job. So, um, basically, the story is I've been trying to get out of sales since I got into it, and I've never been able to. And now that's it. This is it for me. Um, so, Mom asked me to come up with like 10 tricks for sales. Shara sounds a little wonky. I think it's just how I sound, Leslie. I think that's just my voice. <laughs> no, it's, it is wonky. It's okay. bad. It's okay. Can you guys hear her well enough to understand her? Thanks, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> that's mommy. You're so lucky. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully everybody can hear. It, it is kind of hard to hear, but it's real echoey. If I sit further back, maybe? Is this more helpful? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Try, Lola. Okay. All right. So top 10. Okay. I'm yeah. helping. So Leslie, let us know. Uh, I have a question though, because you started off in sales and was really miserable doing it and went through several positions and it sounded like it was just a progression. And now obviously you're, you're, you're rocking, you're a high performer and you love what you do. How much of that is, I guess, I guess the job is part of the equation, but how much of that is just kind of learning and figuring out what it's about along the way? A lot. Um, a lot of it has to do with good people helping you get what you need and do the right things to be successful. Um, having the right people around you and then also being with a good company. Um, you all run your own companies, so you have the ability to make sure that where you are is where you want to be. I didn't have that until recently. So that tells me that if you're doing a job or an activity or whatever, and you think that you hate doing it, well, maybe that's not a terminal thing. Maybe if you spent time learning how to do it better and got coaching and advice from other people who knew how to do it and have, you know, experience that you know, there, there might be a lot more things out there that one can do in activities and skills that they could really enjoy doing if they just, poked around and looked for the right opportunity and developed the skills to do it. I agree. And there's some, there's some jobs in particular people expect you to know how to do, or you don't know how to do it. And that's it. Like for sales, they pretty much say, just go do it. I think a lot of um, management is like that too. Just go and figure it out. If you like people, then you'll be fine. And that's not really the way life works in anything, let alone those types of industries. But Lava, you did have professional training as well for, for this stuff. Who did you get your professional training through? Um, here and there, everyone. Um, I would say I got, so Jeb Blunt himself came and worked with us at Penske, and that was good. I liked that very much. Um, we got some good training. We got tons of training with Amarok. Penske did some as in-house though, so really focused on what they were looking for. Um, but you, I think that they give you, we want you to do this instead of here's the psychology behind sales and those are two different things. But training is, is, is elusive, especially when it comes to stuff like sales. I think a lot of people <laughs> feel that just like what you said, well, if you're good with people and can talk, you can kind of figure it out. You really don't need training. I mean, how big a part, how important is training in order to be able to, to sell at the top level? Uh, imperative. I mean, nobody bumbles their way into the top level without a good network of people helping them, 
a lot of training, be it through their company or outside of their company, because you can't find other training. Um, I mean, unless you what, was that, what was that one really good program that you told me about? Sandberg or Sanford? Don't, don't you guys love her, her COVID coffee <laughs> instead of this? Only a mom would notice that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'll apologize for us. You're under some extra <laughs> scrutiny here. Les doesn't treat all of her guests this way. That is so not true. She knows me, guys. See? She knows me. She's like, of course she does. Of course. Okay. Okay. I'll take that back. She does. It's true. Okay. Lava. Um, what was the name of that training though that you really loved? Sandberg or Sand something or other. Um remember which one I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Um well, it's okay. Let's let's get your top ten because I know she's got about 35 minutes worth of stuff to talk about, Tom. Okay. And, and when you remember, Lava, just tell us, because I know it was really a, a great program. I have some books. Um, I remember he had a couple of books I really enjoyed, and I can I can find it there. Okay, so top 10. Uh, Mom asked me to create these. I think you see a lot of these in sales. Um, I tried to keep mine a little different than what you might see if you just Google top 10. But this is what's been best for me. Um, hold on. Oh. Sorry. So for y'all that don't know, Shar is building a house right now, and she's transitioned from her old house to her new house, and she's in a thousand square foot apartment coming from like how big was your house before, Lava? Thirty eight hundred square feet. From thirty eight hundred down to a thousand square feet, they're struggling a little bit. Yes, Sandler yeah. sales training. That was it. Good job, Heather. Sandler, and I was like, it's not quite right. But yeah, Sandler. But, you know, this is really good experience because there's some people, it's a trend where people are like getting these little tiny houses, like 400 square feet and living in them. So if you ever thought you'd be interested in this, this is a good opportunity to kind of see what it feels like. I never thought I'd be interested in that. Um, if you had ever met my my amazing daughter, mom, Liz's amazing grandbaby, um, she's a delight. But she is like a little whirling dervish of energy and destruction in our world. So a thousand genetics. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Sorry, back to it. Okay, so everyone knows you need to create relationships for sales, right? Mm -hmm. The trick for relationships though is a couple things. So it depends on your selling um, how long your sell cycle is. So for me right now, I, I only have 20 accounts that I watch all over the country. And I've known these people for two years. So I have a long sales cycle. I know these people really well. However, when I worked at Geico, it was short. You know, I have five minutes. I have to ask you questions like, what do you do for a living? Uh, your social security number. Like I have to get in touch with these people quickly and get them to trust me fast. Um, at Geico, of 300 people, I was in the top... 15 for sales every year, but more importantly, we were great on two things. It was quality and customer interaction. Customer interaction, I was in the top five every single month because I had some tricks. If you have to ask the same question every time, have your answers ready. So a guy go, I'd ask, well, what kind of car are you driving? And every, any car you gave me, I can give you a compliment for, um, a 1998, um, Honda Accord. Oh, those Hondas, they last forever. What a good little gas car. Or 2020 Jaguar. Well, that's a gorgeous car. Hold on. Let me look that one up. I don't know what that one looks like. To, oh, it's a 1994 Ford pickup truck. Oh, man, completely made out of metal. You're totally safe in that. Any <laughs> car you have, if I know I have to ask that question, I have got an answer for you. I've got some way to connect with you on that. If you have a job where you have to ask one question, every single person, make sure you have answers to all those. Um, all right, so I have, a, I have a question for you then, Lava. So one of the questions that we ask a lot is, do you have any pets? So what we might really want to have an answer for is if they say, yes, I have two little chihuahuas. We want to we want to be able to tell you what's awesome about chihuahuas. Or I've got a new puppy. We want to be we want to know the answer for what's a what is cool about a puppy, right? Is that what you're saying? You'll want to find something that is 
Well, first it has to be honest. People can tell if you're just dialing it in. Um, so if you don't really like animals, just avoid that one. You'll have to ask more than one question. Um, I like animals, so any animal you give me, I can be like, oh, what's their name? Are they young? How big? And people that have pets love their pets. So if you do like pets, it's an easy connect. Very easy. <laughs> so you ready for number nine? Go like this when you want him to change page. I will. Um, okay. The other thing is, if you've got a longer sales cycle or you don't ask the same question all the time, so like you have to be able to communicate, in your area and in your demographic, there are going to be things that are popular. Um, I live in Dallas. Um, I have to be able to talk about football, so I can. Um, I talk more about college than pro personally, but I can discuss that. I work with a lot of ex-police officers, so I can discuss um, conservative politics comfortably. You don't have to agree, but you need to be able to talk about it. Okay. Next. <laughs> Okay, so everyone's heard about mirroring and you think it's, well, they lean forward, I lean forward. They lean back, I lean back. And there is something absolutely to be said about being able to read someone's body language because you can get a lot off of that. But the other thing about mirroring is with your personality. So everyone has a standard personality that they fall into. Believe it or not, this is about as professional as I get. My default is more like, so happy to be here. Um, I'm just so excited to be talking to all of you. Sales is the most fun thing you could ever do. So really bubbly, really high energy. To say that not everybody enjoys that would be an understatement. So <laughs> you need to figure out where you fit and then be able to figure out how far on the spectrum you can go. I have two counterparts. Um, one is my exact opposite. He is perfectly buttoned up at all times and is very, very professional. He's from the uh, the Navy Academy, the Naval Academy, um, played, played sports in college, this type of thing. So he has to be able to go from that level to more of my level with it seeming sincere. So you need to be able to mirror how your people interact. That's one thing. The other one, and people forget this and don't do it all the time, and it makes me crazy when I buy things, is if your person texts you, do not call them. They do not want to talk to you on the phone. That is why they texted you. There will be times when you have to, but if you can text back, that's their preferred way of communicating. If they email you, don't text them. So if they respond, if they talk to you in one way, respond back in that same way if you can. I had my message on LinkedIn the other day. This was not convenient for me, but it doesn't matter because my job is to make it, it easier for him. So I responded back on LinkedIn. So you want to work within their parameters. Most okay. response-wise and response-wise. Okay. Next, Next slide. Next slide. Yes, sir. Good manners, Lava. <laughs> well, I have a toddler, so it's, it's constant with the police. That's, right, here. that's right. <laughs> right. You know, I hate to bring this one up because everybody knows about referrals, but it's just, it's imperative and you can't get away with it. Um, I do have some info for you that can help. Um, the thing about referrals is, of course, you're going to ask people who like you to refer you, and you're going to ask them, who who do you think could use this, what, what would I have? Who do you know of has had an issue? Um, some other things we can do is at Geico, at one point, they had it set up so every time you call, you gave somebody your referral number, if they called in and gave your referral number, they got like $10 or something like that. Um, this is all pretty simple stuff, and I'm sure you know all of that. It's just so important. I will tell you one thing that I don't think most people think enough about. Um, there is a psychological study that says if you want people to like you, then instead of doing something nice for them, hold on, coming in hot. Yep. If you want people to like you, instead of doing something nice for them, let them do something nice for you. So, if you can get someone to give you a give you a referral for somebody, be effusive in your compliments. Like, oh my gosh, yes, thank you so much. My business runs because of people like you. We couldn't do it without your referrals. The people like you give us, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Really, really appreciate it because now you're making that person feel like they've done good in the world. They've done good for you, and I don't care who you are, you like that. The other thing about referrals is that when you get a referral, now when you talk to that person, you already have an in. So 
Tom refers me to his friend, Joe. I talked to Joe and I'm like, oh, don't you love Tom? I know he's one of my favorite customers. I'm so thankful. And then, I mean, he even gives me referrals. How do you not love Tom? Right? So that's the other side of referrals people think about is both sides. You know, when you're thankful for the person who gave it to you, because now they'll be looking for more ways to give, it, give out your information. And also using the, that kinship to your relationship with your person you're meeting. Okay. Can you do that, Leslie? Oh, yeah, I'm so oh, So, Lava, you know, you know Leslie. She's the one that gave me this painting. Oh, you love that. Remember? Oh, I know. Yeah. Remember when I told you about it? Yeah, no, I She know. painted it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, Heather, Heather, my mom doesn't think we look alike. Hello, could we look more alike? Hello. <laughs> I don't think we look alike. I don't get it. Okay. Um, oh, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. This is such a good one. This is a good one for life, not even for sales. I love being uncomfortable. So there are some tricks though to being uncomfortable. Um, probably the best trick for being uncomfortable is people like people who say exactly what they want to know. We, when you're trying to sell something, people know you want to know. Are they going to say yes? Are they interested? What What did they like about what you said? They know that. So people respond well when you just say, so what do you think about what I just said? And so what is your budget for this? Okay. And then when you say it, straight face, no joking, eye contact, and then sit back and let them respond. Don't soften your question. Ask them straight how you want them answered. And if you're thinking, oh, I really want to know this, but I don't know how to ask. Just say it just like that. Just say it exactly how you're thinking it and then let them respond. Um, as long as you act like what you're saying is completely reasonable, people will answer. Like I said, Geico, people are on the phone with me for two minutes. I asked for their social security number. 98% of people will give me their social security number. This is crazy. So people have a trouble saying, you know, what's your budget? And a lot of times you'll get this. I don't know. I don't really know what my budget is. That's not true. You know what your budget is. Or if you don't know exactly what it is, you have an idea. A good way to hedge that is say, okay, well, is it like $50 a month? Or is it like $900 a month? Because even if they don't know, they'll be like, oh, no, not 50. Or no, no, not 900. You'd be like, oh, somewhere like maybe 400. And then they'll say, yes, because they'll get used to answering your questions. The more people answer your questions, They'll get in the habit of answering your questions and they won't want to stop. So you can hedge that one, but only if they force you to. Otherwise, just get comfortable being uncomfortable. And I mean, personally, I kind of enjoy it because it's kind of amazing when people tell you if you just ask it straight. And people do respect it, it's been my experience. Make sure I fall ahead on that. So, you know, I'm getting a lot of feedback here, and I personally am. Um, just blown away about what I'm hearing here. Obviously, you know, we all do sales at some level, but at the highest, you know, being, being, you know, at the highest point of the game is something completely different. And sure. I think that uh, you're giving us a lot of incredible advice here. Thank you. Sure. My pleasure. Love to help people who want to hear more about sales. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. Yep, okay. The flip side of that is anyone you talk to that says get comfortable with rejection, I don't think that's true. I don't know anyone who's comfortable with rejection. I'm not. It's not natural to be comfortable with rejection. It's weird, it's not right. Don't try and be comfortable with rejection. Forget that. Here's what I would tell you. I've been in sales in one way or another for 15 years. I have never personally been rejected. Ever, not one time yet. Um, I've had people not buy things from me so literally constantly, um, but no one's ever been like, I'm not buying that because I don't like you. When you think about it, when you don't buy something, it's almost always because you don't need it or you can't afford it. Neither of those things have anything to do with you as a salesperson. Nothing. You, in fact, you can't do much change those things. So if someone says no, do not internalize things that have nothing to do with you. That doesn't have anything to do with you. In fact, if they tell you no, good. That's one thing off your plate. We'll get to that in a little bit, but um, don't try and get comfortable with rejection. 
you're not going to come to a projection. Just recognize you're not being rejected ever. They just don't want what you're selling right that second. The other thing is you don't really know what you're doing today. You don't what? I didn't I didn't catch that, Lava. Was it because of the airplane flying by, Mom? Is that why you didn't catch it? Maybe. <laughs> Contributing factor, yes. Yeah. Um, so you don't know what you've done in the day. So when I go and knock on doors, right, and I'll go to a bunch of places, they're like, no, we don't need that, or no, we're not having any issues with security, or no, we don't do that, we don't need that, what have you. I'll go out, I'll come home, like, well, that 14, not even interested today, like, not even interested, don't want to hear any more information. 14 a row. Ooh, that was a hard day. What you don't know, and I've had this happen. One year to the day, I've had somebody call me up and be like, you came by here a year ago and we had a conversation and I, we didn't need you then, but we do need you now. You have no idea what you're doing today. It, will, it can pay off six months from now. It can pay off six weeks from now, but don't, as long as you did the work today, it will pay off. It just will. Even if it can pay off exactly today, it's coming. Um, it's a numbers game. I like that. I like that a lot, Lava. That that actually helps me feel a little bit better that I might not get the results today, but it is paying off. It's just a longer game. And it's crazy that one I was talking about, it was to the day. They called me and said, Shara, I know. We talked about it and I looked it up. It was literally been to the day. And I was like, wow. perfect. So you just, yeah, you just don't know the long-term benefits of what you're doing. Every time you talk to somebody and tell them who you are, every time you're doing good work because they didn't know who you were before so it doesn't matter okay i'm ready for the next one ah this is one of my right. favorite also hold on a second hey you guys um we see that you got a couple of questions in here we'll get to them after we get down to number one so don't worry david we're not ignoring you i um you're you're coming in on um modern cleaning instead of cleaning business today yeah. So I can't respond. I've, I've, I've got them all. We'll go back and hit questions at the end. But yeah. ask your questions. That's good. We'll, we'll, we'll pick them up. Okay. Um, this is one of my favorites. Let me rank for you the things that you want to hear from a person. Yes. No. Let me think about it. I'm going to tell you this. And you're going to say, I hear you, Shara. I totally believe that. I know. And you're going to fall for it again. And you know how I know that? I still fall for it. Because hearing someone say, oh, that sounds really good. That sounds really interesting. Uh, I got I to gotta think about it a little more. Oh, man. That answer. Oh, man. Because here's the problem. They might need to. And there is a place for it when you need to use your breast discretion where Sure, they need to talk to their spouse or their boss or whomever. And that is reliable and accurate and fine. What you want to be aware of and try and get a read on is when people are too nice to tell you no because they don't know it, but they will waste so much of your time. Oh, wow. And I have wasted, I've, I'm not kidding, I've wasted years on accounts that did nothing. And here's why part of it too. Sales at its base, the actual work of sales sucks. It just sucks. So you'll it's so much easier and more comfortable to call on. Oh, I tell you what, Liz was so nice and Liz wanted to think about it. So I'll call Liz again. Today. I'm totally working. You're not working. You know she's not gonna say yes. If she was gonna say yes, she would have called you. She's not, you're not working. You are trying to convince yourself that you're working and you're not gonna help yourself at all doing that. That being said, be easy on yourself when you do that because I I don't know a single salesperson who doesn't do that. You'll get your people that you like, that you think are going to do something, that you want to believe, and they're just so friendly to you that you'll fall into a trap. Just don't fall into it for too long. That being said, we're, everyone's human. If I'm having a really, really bad day where I know that I am off my game, I'm not doing myself any good, I'll reach out to those nice people I like. Because then I'm always doing something. <laughs> but I know I'm not really working. I'm I'm filming it in that day. You're still doing something, but you're not really, really working. So it's okay to some of those people in that pocket. But just be aware when you're doing it. Be aware. Be aware. So you're really 
you're really just going back to what you said before. If you're uncomfortable while you're doing your work or you're getting a no and that's not feeling good, that's good work. But yeah. if you're too comfy, yeah, that's not good work. That's yeah. not good work. And if you've, like, the whole thing is, if you've got nothing to lose, go for no. Like, if they're not going to say yes, get them say no. We can move on. Because I tell you, there is nobody selling anything right now that doesn't think that what they're selling is worthwhile. So if you're selling it, you know it's worthwhile. If you don't, get out of there. So what, te what techniques do you use in order to get somebody to say no when they're being nice and saying, let me think about it. I need to, you know, talk to whomever I got, you know, how do you get them to say no? I usually do exactly what I was telling you earlier. I say the things exactly what I want. I say exactly what I'm thinking. So I'll say this. Oh, okay. So Tom, I think that you're one of those people who's really nice and doesn't want to tell me you're not actually interested, which let me just tell you. I would rather hear no than let me think about it because what's going to happen is for the next however long, every week, I'm going to email you, waste both of our time. So if you're not interested, just tell me no. And then if you become interested in the future, you can always reach out. I mean, you also have my card and my phone number, but this way it's easier. And that is one of the one way to do it. Um, depending on the personality type, I have also. I've had some strong headed people that I'll just push and push and push until they're finally like, I'm just not interested. And I'm like, thank you. That's what I was looking for. I mean, if you have nothing to lose, throw a Hail Mary. Um, you can try, you know, um, if you said you're interested, but you want to think to your spouse, why don't we call your spouse? Let's call him right now. Get an answer. Here, uh, use my phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, get uncomfortable. It's good. It's going to be uncomfortable. But if you've got nothing to lose, I love having nothing to lose. Like, let's do this. And that's also a good place to try new things. Like, sometimes I'm in a good mood and I'll try being really friendly and seeing if I win them over. I can't. Or being really aggressive and seeing if I get a no. I can. Um, trying something creative that I've never tried before. Sometimes it goes either way. Um, but there's a lot of different ways. You kind of have to feel out the different person. Hail Marys, though. I love Hail Marys. Okay. Back, back to sports again. You and your sports thingy. Well, I deal with nothing but men. So I do a lot of sports stuff. Yeah. But you love sports, too. So you yeah. just wear it like that. Yeah. yeah. Watching them playing, then yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, creativity. So we all know we have to think creatively about things, right? Here's what I would tell you. I would tell you to find a time in your day to think creatively about things. So uh, it's a crazy to me the amount of time I spend thinking about, okay, well, I need to go to UPS and I need to go to the store and what are we going to have for dinner? And oh gosh, I got to call my mom back and write all of these things. So when I personally go to bed until I fall asleep, all I think about is work and creative new ways to do things. Um, We've all thought about, so what do our customers have in common? What are they looking for? But something that we do a lot at my company now is we discuss the buyer's journey. Because before they get to the place where they're going to say yes, they'll have done things. And the buyer's journey is different from one person to the next, or at least from one type of person. So for us, we have like, if I'm dealing with a VP of security, the buyer's journey there is different than if I'm dealing with a site manager. This buyer's journey is different. Um, so figuring that out is one thing you can do. Um, also, just completely off the wall ideas that I don't know. This work. I when I was at Penske, we're renting trucks, right? That's the whole job. You just have to rent trucks. That doesn't sound that hard. People in the area, right? So we're constantly looking at companies, trying to find new companies. Who's using trucks these days? There was a gal I worked with, and I still to this day think of her. She's a genius. We can rent them to the public if they're moving. We went, created a flyer, and asked a couple of complexes if whenever you give your welcome to our apartment complex, can you put this letter in with all of your welcome letters? How smart was that? Why didn't they do that across the board? How had no one else thought of it? It was it was just a completely awful thing that she did completely on her own. It was just genius. And I couldn't hear it. Tom, could you hear it? I couldn't hear it. It was too echoey. It was a, oh, no. Hold on. Just repeat that last thought about, about the flyers. Okay. So she, we have to rent truck for Penn City, right? We can rent them to people for moving. 
what she did was she created a flyer and then took them to apartment complexes and asked them that in there, welcome to our apartment, like they give you a little catalog, if she could put her flyer in there. So when people were renting apartments, the first thing they picked up was, oh, I do need a rental truck. Oh, here's someone's number and some special rates for us through the, and she got it so it looked like there's special rates through the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. Like, how smart is that? How would no one else thought of that yet? I, it, it, was, it was crazy. And she just thought of it one day. So my, my suggestion for you here is, I have a friend who does it in the shower. When she's in the shower, she only thinks about work. That's it. She turns off her brain to everything else. Um, I have another friend who does it while she's driving. For me, driving is too much time. So I do it before I fall asleep every night. That's when I think about what am I missing? Could I do something different? How can I change what I'm doing in some way? Okay. Cool. Okay. This is a popular one, but just in case you haven't heard of it, it's called the three month rule. And it's similar to what we were talking about earlier, mom. So the three month rule says that everything that you do today is because of what you did three months ago. So someone explained to me like this, you're on a roller coaster because sales is a roller coaster. It just is, you're gonna have good months and bad months. Um, but while, while you're on a roller coaster, never coast. Because what happens is you get to a month where, oh my gosh, all the things I've been working on are coming in and I have got all this work to do. I have, send out these contracts, I have to follow up this person, I have to call them because they asked me to call them, I have to do all these things. And you'll stop doing the basics. You'll stop knocking on the doors, you'll stop sending out the flyers, you'll start, you'll stop <clears throat> leads. So in two more months, you'll be like, no, I'm buying anything anymore. I'm doing the same thing I've always done. No, no, I'm doing the same thing. And <clears throat> it is on your really good month, you stop doing the basics to make your leads. So if your funnel goes to zero, you're in trouble. And I get that from everybody I know in sales that is like a personal friend, not a colleague. They'll say, I'm just having a really bad month. And I don't, I'm not doing anything wrong. I think I need to work on my closing. But salespeople inevitably, when they think they're not doing well, it's because I'm not closing well enough. You're closing fine. You're closing the exact same way you've always closed. You didn't create enough leads. You got, you were on the downhill of the sweet roller coaster ride and they do all the work to get to the top again. Keep yeah. You know, we have we have the same sort of cycle when it comes to hiring. You know, we see this a lot of times with people. They they'll hire people, hire people, and then they're fully staffed and then they stop hiring. They stop placing ads and then they're like, Oh my gosh, I can't hire anybody. I don't know where all the people are. You know, we need a better ad. No, you don't need a better ad. You just need to keep place placing that same ad. So I think it's the same thing. I think that's and it's a natural response because when you are like when you're training, you're doing a lot of training work. You don't have time to be answering more ads. Like you've got the people. Now we're doing the training. I'm, I'm you are legitimately busy. When I'm closing business, I'm legitimately busy. But you right. have to have time for those those other things that are it's the same thing too. It's not fun to do that stuff. It's not that's not the fun work. But you have to make right. fun work, even even though you're busy. And you're busy doing money making things, which are awesome things. We were talking about this the other day in the context of marketing, advertising, you know, like AdWords and things like that. And, you know, sometimes we're short of labor and it's like, well, don't you stop advertising when you're in that situation? It's like, no, because it's so hard to get the, the pipeline filled up again. You want to keep getting those leads regardless. For sure. Yeah, that's good. You fall into that one. Okay, I think we all know this one, but it just it has to be said. I, I would say that there is one thing that differentiated me than most of my peers when I started seeing my career really go up was books. I personally love books. Um, I like I like the actual physical act of reading. If you don't audible books, I know somebody, Liz, that listens to her books on 1.25 speed because she wants to them through them quickly dude that's so long ago we're at 1.75 now oh my god i don't know how you do it i think lucky it's she's insane but i mean you can listen to books while you're getting ready you can listen to books in the car i mean i listen to them in the car while i'm getting ready while i'm doing my chores around the house turn off the tv stick it in my pocket my headphones on making dinner that type of thing um so books we all know blogs are important but I think there's so much knowledge in books. Like if a book's been published, there's some good stuff in there. 
I have read a few books where I only wanted one or two things, but still felt so worth it because those were big things. Oh, those were awesome. So I, I'm a big believer in books. Um, networking in groups. We all know this. I'm a part of five different transportation groups right now. I'm about to be on the board of one. What? What do I know on transportation? But that's what you do. You have to get in there. And I know it's hard for introverts. I know it's hard because you have to be so on, like so on. But if you can be on for an hour and a half, you can do all your work in an hour and a half. You can meet 20 people in an hour and a half if you're on. So if you're an introvert and you hate the actual like uh, picking up the phone and making the awkward calls, so that might be a way for you to get around that at least somewhat. You're going to have to make the calls, but at least somewhat. And then last, mentor. If there's one thing I tell every single person I know, not even in sales, get a mentor, get one. Um, get one who does whatever you want next. My, 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 it's always been my thing. Got a little fly in here. Um, so my current one is actually my book, which I don't, I don't normally do because this is the person I want to ask about the next level of my career. But at Penske, how I got back into sales was when that job opened up, my then mentor said, you need to apply. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be in sales. He's like, Char, you need to apply. And he taught me some interesting things, like little things that I've never forgotten. Like he told me, always be the first one here. And I was like, why? He goes, no one cares when you leave. No one even notices. But if you're the first one here, people will think you work hard even if you don't. Like, and that is crazy and true. I'm always the first in my office. Always. Now I am working hard, but I make sure that I'm always the first one there because I know it makes me look good. And I learned that because I had a mentor and he was saying, do this with your career, do this. This is what they look for. This is what your bosses right now are looking for. So if you own your own company, find the people who own the company that you want to be like and ask that person, can I take you to lunch? And then I always say, would you mind being my mentor? Because people, are flattered to hear that they'll almost always say yes they might say oh, i don't have a lot of spare time right now but I'll, I'll help you where i can take it you can have more than one mentor take all the mentors you can get and then if you have a question those are people you reach out to those are people in your back pocket that can help you um, tell you what you need to do next or man i'm having trouble with x y and z did you go through that yeah i would do something similar or no i haven't so maybe here's what i did differently to not hit that stumbling block Mentor up, get one, get two, get three. I love them. Yeah. All right. All right. Here we are. Number one sucks. I'm sorry. It is, is what it is. If you're going to be in sales, you just have to do the thing. You have to do the things. Um, there are some tricks to getting the things done. I will tell you this. I don't know about for everybody. Every single time I go and walk into a place and I'm like, can I speak to your manager? Ah. It's uncomfortable every single time 15 years in still uncomfortable but i will tell you this usually the worst one is the first one of the day so the first one of the day i get that done easy i'm downhill from here no problem so two things most people do better i'm a strong component of having a schedule i always when i was knocking on doors would leave my house at 7 30 in the morning i didn't have to i could have not left my house at all i could have left at noon lots of people leave at nine but I did my best work if I left house early. I felt like I was being productive. I'm gonna do a good job today. I am gonna get out there and just do the work and it's gonna go great. I had that feeling. So however you help you your call, find out what that is and then create a schedule around that. The other half of the schedule is the um, there is there's a few books on it, but one of my favorites was um, well, what was that book about the habits? Do you remember the name of the habit book off the top of your head? Oh, so many of them, Lava. High Performance Habits by Brian Burchard. No. Um, Basically, the, what I took out of one of those was- Stephen uh, Covey, Seven Habits of Successful People. I bet she might be talking about Rockefeller Habits. I might be. The promise was, though, that nobody has enough motivation to do all the things all the time. None of us do. It's why diet fail. It's why you stop working out, which I am currently guilty of. Don't want to get into it. So what I did for this, because no one's going to watch you, especially if you're the business owners, you have to make a routine. So mine was, um, I would get up the second time my alarm went off. I let myself sleep in one time, get up and then put on my work clothes. 
and I would always have my stuff waiting for me. So once my work clothes were on, because were on, that was my first, that, everything else is easy. Because now I've already done the hard, like I'm already in my work clothes. I mean, I'm, my, I mean, I'm not going to sit at home now. I'm in my work clothes. It's not comfortable. So now I make my tea, I grab my paper, and I go. So if you can just create a, a routine, then you only have to get the first thing done. Because after that, it'll just naturally kind of snowball down the hill for you. So that would be how I went against how I made myself do the thing every single day, even when I didn't want to. Have a schedule and have a routine. And that's it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Excellent. Do we want to take a couple questions? Okay, yeah. here's, an e here's an easy one. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put a poll up on my own page, guys. Does she look like me or not? Yes or no? Because people always say we look so much alike, and I'm like, yeah, I don't see it. Take, I don't get it. take off your glasses. I can't see myself without my glasses. But they can see you. And you can change your smile. When she before she got her jaw surgery, we had the exact same smile. Did we? All right. I'll I'll take your word for it. All right. Yeah. All okay. right. Samantha. Oh, yeah, here's a question. What other things could cleaning clients do for us besides referrals? Uh, I'm sure you have your people that you have them on speed dial where other people can call, right? I'm sure that's normal. Like what, Lava? So you have your people that um, maybe somebody's not sure if they want to go with you or another company and you have those, like, you can call Liz and she'll tell you I'll do a great job or a list of people like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, ooh, that's an easy one. Testimonials to review sites, maybe. Testimonials are good. Or um, if you can do like business case, uh, not business case. Um, um, oh, I forgot the word for a longer testimonial, but the good thing about testimonials too is you can write them up for them. Like, oh, I got into this because, or I got, I got the service because um, I have three kids and two dogs and my weekends are spent just cleaning and frustrating me. And now I can pay and every two weeks and I don't feel like I have to do that anymore. Now I spend my time, my weekends having fun with my family. And then you can send that to them. If they agree, they can sign it. And now you've got, you could have entire books of different things. You can also do really um, specific ones. So um, one lady has nine cats. So when you meet somebody who has nine cats and she's like, well, I don't know what I need but well, I had a lady who kind of reminded me just of Peggy Sue and here's what she said. Or um, somebody travels a lot for work and so their house just kind of gets into disrepair. And they don't need a lot of work, maybe once a month just the dust so when they're home, it's nice and cozy. You have that person write you something or you write it for them because people won't want to write it for you. And if you write it, you can write exactly what you want. And then just ask them to sign it. It's my favorite. Cool. Yeah. So, and actually, I, I, we, you know, we talk about this a lot, but nobody really does this. And Shari, you told told me this maybe I don't know forever ago, maybe even ten years ago. And you do this all the time, right? You write out the testimonial and you send it to them and ask them to sign it, and they do. Oh, constantly. I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. That's great. Thank you. And now, how easy is that? Yeah, and they literally will be like, oh, you wrote it for me? Oh, my gosh. that's And then you're super effusive because that's so helpful for your business. I'll be like, oh, yes, that's exactly what I need. Thank you so much because especially they, these people like you. They already think you do a good job and I have to put their name on it. So they'll love to be a part of your growth. I don't think I can pull that, oh, thank you. Oh thank you so much. It's okay. I'm gonna work on I can. That. I can. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would say stay within your personality, please, Tom. Um, do not try and act like Liz. I don't think you'll fly. No, I think it's adorable. All right. Many, many businesses have jumped into booking online and trying to reduce or eliminate the sales process. Do you believe and could you talk about how the sales process adds much more value to a personal service like house cleaning? What he's, what he's talking about is a lot of companies have basically stood up websites where 
they'll ask you how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, I'll give you a price. You get in your credit card and basically you've bought service and you haven't talked to anybody, but for every, you know, one person that does that, there's probably 10 more who kind of went through the process and quit somewhere along the way. Yeah, hold on a second. I love when you turn into that little round circle, Lava. Me too. So, so cool like that. I feel so cute. Um, okay, so I will say that I think that there is a place uh, for that. There are people, especially young people, who do not want to talk to somebody. We don't like being sold. I want to just go online. I at least want to see how much it is because if I am looking to spend $50 and I can't get anything below $300, then I don't want to waste my time or your time. Mostly my time. Um, so I think there is a place for that. However, the problem is the cost per person to get them on your website to fill that out is exorbitant. I'm sure I don't need to tell you. I'm sure you've done the math, but it's crazy. So the have to. So you do want to have it so that people can talk to you and do see that. So maybe on maybe on that page where they are going to be able to fill out the stuff and get their information themselves, you have those testimonials running. So you've got people talking to you while you're doing it. Oh, hi, I've yeah, um, been a customer for so and so years and we do a lot of video testimonials right now because people are video centric right this second. And, um, it worked out really well for us because my husband and I, neither of us like to do the dishes or neither of us like to dust. It's probably a better one. So, or we don't want to do the bathroom. So we don't have to anymore because we're, we're constantly like having to like draw straws and go to the bathroom or, you know, little, little blips that are going constantly to give them like some cell filling. So what you're saying is still having the conversation with them while they're on that page. So they're still seeing that popping up. Okay. I like that. Or content. You want content for sure there because you don't want to lose somebody. Not just a form saying how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, how many. Keep giving them information at the same time about keep going, keep going. You're going to love it. Your bathrooms are going to be clean. You're going to, your house is going to be great. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. I get that. Uh, did I answer your question, David? I think that you did. That's awesome uh, advice. <laughs> Making a note. Um, okay, <laughs> what time is it? Me uh, and I yeah. At the Bye. top of the hour. This was probably one of the fastest hours I think we've had. Yeah, good job, Lola. Oh, so I have to tell you guys this real quick. So for her to be able to come on here and do this, I asked her, what, maybe a week ago, Lola, two weeks ago, to do it? And yeah. she's like, okay, I'll do it, mama. But I'm really nervous. I'm like, how are you nervous? You do sales for 15 years, top salesperson. She's like, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm not nervous, I'm awkward, I'm awkward. If I could see all of your faces, I'd be like, I'd make uncomfortable jokes, they wouldn't land. Oh, it's so, like my boss has been like, what happened to you? And I'm like, I'm sorry. They were all looking at my face and I just froze. <laughs> you, you are way, way, way too talented to be nervous. There's, that's just. Um... That, that's kind of my point though, you know, 15 years in top salesperson, multiple years in a row and still nervous. So, you know, being nervous, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. So, so you got me thinking now. Maybe, maybe I should be more nervous, huh? <laughs> you know, if you're not nervous, not uncomfortable, not doing the work. Yeah. Okay. Um, real quick. Uh, cleaning business today. Um, we have this really awesome training program for professional house cleaners and we haven't been talking much about it because we've been cleaning it up on the platform, getting it ready to go. And it's there. Um, we are in unprecedented times and we're going to see more of that over the next few weeks because 2008, I had the best staff I ever had because the housing market crashed and there were a lot of people in the job market and we had our pick. In a couple of weeks, the federal unemployment benefits are going to go away and there's going to be a flood of talented people in the market. And you're going to have a lot of people to choose from. 
a lot of them are going to be coming from 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 jobs and professions where you know they have expectations that there's going to be real training and more information and they're going to be looking for that and a lot of us really have built our businesses on a model where that really hasn't been the expectation and really hasn't been the focus well we've made it really really easy with the phc program um it's an online platform you can buy multiple seats at discounts and um I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because we're short of time, but really need to be thinking about, are you prepared for what's going to be coming down the road the next couple of weeks? And bottom, this line, is bottom line, Tom, I know we're out of time here, but I really have to interrupt you guys. At the end of this month, there are going to be tons of opportunities, tons and tons and tons. We have a whole new chance of getting the best people in our companies, but you got to be ready. If you are not a professional house cleaning service right now, maybe you're calling yourself professional, but you're like, you don't really know all the stuff. Here you go. Here's your program right here. Just take the program, sign yourself up, get the information and get ready to have a professional program to pass on to these new people who are expecting better than what we're doing right now. If if I had a nickel for every time a cleaning business owner told me I just can't hire the right people, well, give it a couple of weeks. You're going to have the best chance you've had in, in a dozen years. But hiring the right people is just part of it. The other part is you got to train them. And this is just, just so easy. You got to do it. Um, cleaning business today, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, just your email, first name, last name. You'll be getting information about a lot of new things that are coming down the road, in term, including what we're doing next Wednesday with Deal Wednesday. And um, we've talked about that over the last couple of days. Uh, we're going to have uh, 10 uh, sponsors, give, each giving you a four-minute pitch and a special deal that you're not going to get anywhere else. So it'll be good for like uh, 24 to 48 hours. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, if you have it... Uh, go on to our resource page. I'll drop the uh, link there too. I need to hook up uh, with Greg. He was supposed to send me sent it. to his blog. And he sent it, Tom. He sent it to me. I, I forwarded it to you. You were probably expecting it to I'm come from, from Greg. I, I never read your email. I'm sorry. I do. I know. <laughs> I know. Truth, right? Here we go. I get a lot of emails and I was really looking for something great because I wanted to get it done before five. I do read your email, yeah. but sometimes uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you sent me an email asking me to put that slide together for Shara today. And then you gave, good, me a Tom. you gave me like 30 minutes to do it. And it happened, That's right? Good. Yeah. Good job, Tom. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, yes, Sam, the PHC course is the same one that you purchased a few weeks ago. It, um, it's just the whole entire program now. And we just want to make sure that everybody knows that the whole program is there. It's on the new platform. It's ready to go. You need to have something better than you have right now for the new crop of people that we are going to have access to. We haven't had this chance, y'all. You always bemoan the fact that the people that we get are so bad. We don't get good applicants. That's changing. Get ready now. Smart business move, do the right thing at the right time. And right now, the thing is prep for those new people. Oh, here's something important too. Since you guys are here, there's a discount code that you can get 30% off of whatever you get if you buy. But what does it say? It expires Friday, June 10. So that's like end of the day. What is today? Thursday? June 9th. What are you looking at, Tom? I'm not looking at what you're looking at. No, I'm not looking at because I'm not sharing my screen. I do that all the time. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So <laughs> it's just a code PHC. for the PHC? Yeah. Yeah. So this okay. is for PHC, 30% off, but it expires end of day Friday. Okay. So you can use it today. You can use it tomorrow. We'll right. Thanks, y'all. Y'all be safe. Um, Remember, on the spot tomorrow, bring your best questions. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to end early because it's Friday. It's supposed Friday. to be Sunday. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thanks so much, Lava.